Hello and welcome to this video about isolation example with STM32L5 trust zone. We usually define the trust zone as a mechanism which allows to split hardware and software in two distinct areas, the secure and the non-secure world. This isolation mechanism increases the protection level of our assets. We usually give this definition during session or training session on the result is source question. What should I put in the secure or non-secure world? Can I put everything in the secure world? Why it increase the security? And please give me an example. So the purpose of this video is to give you a short example and I hope it will clarify for you this isolation concept. So we use the STM32L5 in two configuration. Trust zone not, not activated, that means no isolation, and trust zone activated. So as reminders, when trust zone is activated, any IP, a portion of the flash, portion of the RAM could be assigned to the secure or to the non-secure world. The non-secure world can only access the non-secure world. Secure code or the code that is in running in the flash secure can access anything. My concrete example is a heart rate monitor. So we've got a sensor, we've got a heart rate module, so it could be accessed remotely. If I just sum up how it works. A remote user can send a request, send me data. This one arrives through the RF module, his Quest interfaces in our STM32. And then we've got the code in Flash which handles this request. He would analyze it if it's correct. Then he will get the value from the sensor through the SPI interfaces. Then we will encrypt this value because it's a sensitive value and we will send it back to the remote user. We don't want somebody to have it, so we will encrypt it with a secret key which is also stored inside our flash. And then we will return this value encrypted to the i square c the RF module, to the end user. Now with the hacker in the picture. This one will also send a send me data request, but not a normal one. He will put some hack inside. When we will receive it in our code in Flash, in fact, we've got a weakness in this code. This code allows a buffer overflow attack. I don't want to deal with such kind of attack during this training. It's too short. You can just have a look on the literature on our internet. This allows the injection of code in RAM. So I'm our hacker found we've got a weakness in our code and inject some code. And the code injected will get the value from the sensor and jump to the, five, to the step five. So it will send the value in clear. That means the hacker could have access to the value of the earth rate monitor. It's exactly what we want to protect. But if you get a closer look to this architecture, we could imagine the injected code get the secret key from the flash because it's not protected neither and send this value back, which is in a worse situation because the hacker have got our secret key and can decrypt all the communication. You can tell me, but we know there is a weakness in the handle of the request, so the new request received too. Yes, because here it's simple code, but imagine you've got a huge stack of communication like LWIP or something like that. You can still have some issue or such kind of issue. So now we'll activate the trust zone. So we'll activate the isolation. What should I put in the secure world and in the non-secure world? Basically, keep in mind, in the secure world, you have to put what you want to protect. We want to protect, it was the heart rate monitor sensor and the value and the access to this, to the SPI interface for sure and the associated GPIO. In the flash, we will also split between secure and unsecure. And we will put in the secure world the interfaces with the SPI for sure, and also the capability to encrypt and the secret key. The secret key is also something you want to protect because you don't want anybody to have access to it. And now we will define only one single API for the non-secure world. The non-secure world can call only one API, which is get encrypted value. This one just returns a value from the sensor already encrypted. That means the non-secure world don't have access to the secret key, to the value, but can only ask to receive an encrypted value. In the non-secure world, I will put all other stuff, I mean the communication with the outside, because here there is no secret, it's just functional, it's just some generic code and no secret, valuable secret for us. If a hacker managed to access this, he will just see a communication stack, so no, I will see interest for him. So 
this is our isolation definition now. So let's come back with our hacker. ECN is a hack request. It will be handled by our code, which still have our weakness because we don't have discovered this weakness yet. And we'll manage to inject some code. The code will be injected in RAM, but the new request receive code is in the non-secure world, so we only have access to the RAM non-secure. So it was inside the RAM non-secure that the code is injected. And if this code tried to access the sensor, it will fail because we've got the isolation. This code which is running in the non-secure RAM can only access the non-secure world. So the only thing he can ask, maybe he can call the API get encrypted data, but it's that is working as usual, so it will receive an encrypted value and can't do anything. So this is basically what I want to show you. Here you've got a concrete example of this isolation on how it prevents this attack. So as conclusion, I hope this example clarify for you this isolation concept and how it can increase the security level of your platform. A last point I want to understand, uh, to underline, sorry, there is not only the trust zone, we've got other isolation mechanism in our STM32 families. We've got the MPU, firewall, and secure memory. The mechanism are quite different and they don't protect exactly the same thing. So please have a look in the reference panel before using them. I hope you like this video and thanks for your attention.